Hey everyone, welcome to Dit Dot. My name is Amanda, and at some point, you'll probably see my pug Watson scampering around my kitchen. As you saw in today's video, we're gonna make chicken scampi. And I actually learned a little bit while I was looking up what to make for dinner tonight. And a scampi is actually a type of crustacean. They're more popular in Europe. And when that dish, the garlic, oil infused scampi dish came over to America, we started using shrimp. Well, so we started calling it shrimp scampi, which is kind of like saying almost like shrimp shrimp. And then of course, more twists came on it and people have done chicken scampi. Most of the time it is a garlic infused oil, but apparently there's versions out there with even a marinara sauce and other breading and things like that. We're gonna stick with chicken in a garlic, olive oil and butter infused to the sauce. So I have some chicken already cut up here, but I'm gonna show you. We want kind of like some chicken tenderloins, like kind of not like a diced chicken. We want actually kind of some big pieces. So I'm gonna take my knife at an angle and cut. So that way I have like a, almost like a, I guess a chicken medallion. Let's call it that. They're nice, good size pieces of chicken. So we're going to cut this up and then we're going to season our chicken. All right, so my chicken is cut up and I'm going to pour some extra virgin olive oil on top and that's mostly just so that our seasonings have something to stick to. So anybody who has followed my channel for any length of time knows that I really don't follow recipes. I like to do my own thing and I liked the idea that this was kind of a one pot meal for the most part and I'm actually going to, you know, go off book because that's how I roll. And I'm going to try to create it even more one pot by adding some vegetables to the dish. The original recipe that I'm following was just chicken and rice. I will link the recipe below from where I got inspired by this dish. It's from a blog called South of My Mouth, which I thought was really adorable. Yeah, go check them out. Salt, pepper, onion powder, and garlic powder. I'm giving it a, just a good toss to make sure that all that seasoning is coated. And then over to the stove. Okay, so I forgot to check that little box that says make sure the camera is flipped the right way. So you'll notice that the orientation is changing a little bit. I'm sorry about that. I sometimes still keep forgetting to remember keep forgetting to remember. <laughs> you know what I mean? Anyway, so I'm putting some olive oil down in a cold skillet. I'm going to turn on the flame and I'm going to give this oil time to heat up. Okay, first off, apparently I wasn't filming when I put these chickens in, but I basically just put chicken in oil and I'll show you. But <laughs> now that we are filming, you can see that they are starting to get some good color. I wanted, I waited until my skillet was nice and hot before I put them in. And I've flipped them over a couple of times. We wanna make sure that they are pretty much cooked all the way through. I'm gonna check with a thermometer on some of these. Since I do have some pieces that are a little bit smaller, like this one, it's probably done. And I'm pretty good at checking, but thermometer, and you wanna get your chicken to 165, is never a bad thing. And we are gonna put these back in the skillet, so if they're like at 160, that's probably, that's really good. Yeah, so this one is like at 160, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull it. And when you've been cooking for long enough, you'll get like how the texture of the chicken should feel when it's cooked through. So this one's a little, it's small, but it's a little bit fatter, so I'm gonna leave it in for another minute. This one's really firm, so it's good. This one's nice and firm. If they feel there's no bounce to them. Then like that one, I'm gonna leave in just for a little bit longer because there's still a lot of bounce to it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put in the other batch of chicken. All this brown stuff on this on in the skillet, don't let that scare you. That is good. We want that. That is called flavor. So we don't want it to turn black to lower your temperature if it gets too dark, but we do want that brown, those brown bits on the bottom of our skillet. So this one, I'm gonna go ahead and pull it out. 
my stove every stove has personality my stove this side gets hotter like this corner of the stove so that's why i'm kind of rotating it around so that way this side doesn't get burnt i don't know why it's a gas stove it should be an even flame but that's just not how it works <laughs> you want to kind of play around with the temperature because you want these to cook through without burning so i've got it on like a medium low right now and here's the part that I'm pondering in my head right now. So she just has, uh, in her recipe, chicken and rice, and it, believe me, that's good. Like, you could always do your dishes as side dishes. But I kinda wanna try to make it mostly a one-pot meal. I say mostly because I am reserving my chicken over to the side, so I am getting another dish dirty. And to me, a true one-pot meal is everything in there you only get that one thing dirty but this is very close to a one pot so i'm going to add some mushrooms so i think what i'm going to do is after i pull the chicken i'm going to saute up some mushrooms and then pull them too i think that's what i'm going to do all right so we're going to let this cook for a little bit longer while this is cooking i'm going to go ahead and chop up some mushrooms and uh pro tip i don't really use paper towels very often in my kitchen but i do keep lots of rags and if you've only used half of a container of mushrooms, if you put a rag or a paper towel over the top, then it'll keep your mushrooms fresh longer because this will absorb the moisture that the mushrooms put out. And then you can also use this same rag to kind of give it a dusting because you don't, you want to get the like dirt that's off the mushrooms, but you don't ever really want to wash mushrooms because they're like little sponges and they will absorb the water. And then when you put them in a dish, that water will leach out and make whatever you're cooking potentially like soggy or something. Yeah, chicken's doing good. I've got it on like medium low right now. I washed my knife from cutting up my chicken earlier and I'm just gonna give these a quick rough chop. I'm not doing anything super fancy. Chopping them into some slices. Whoa, mushroom overboard. Watson's gonna just See that he does not like mushrooms. I'm pretty sure you don't want to eat that, Watson. You see him down there? He's like, ooh, do I want to eat a mushroom? No, you really don't want to eat a mushroom, Watson. I promise you. Uh, one of my friend's dogs really loves broccoli, which I found hilarious because <laughs> Watson hates broccoli. One time I dropped a piece of broccoli and he gobbled it up before he could even tell what it was. And then he spit it out, and he turned his butt around, and he sat on it. I thought that was really funny. Whew, it's getting hot in here. So I'm gonna do a couple more mushrooms here. Let me check on these chicken real quick. Yeah, they're still very raw. I can see the pink. So just keep giving them a turn. Yep, looking good. I've got them on pretty low because I don't want them to burn again. I just want them to cook. I'm going to add a couple more mushrooms here. So I really like to kind of create recipes. Well, sometimes I do create my own recipe. And then other times I will find something that someone else has done. And then like either substitute things that I have in my own kitchen or flavors that I know that my family likes that, you know, maybe be slightly different from the original recipe or, you know, like this tonight where I want to try to add some veggies. So I'm going to make this a one pot. So obviously if you're not a big mushroom fan, leave these out and I'm going to add some peas at the end, but like maybe some chopped up asparagus at the end would be really good too. A chopped up broccoli would probably be really good. Lots of different options. So brown is good. Like this is starting to get fairly dark, but it's still brown. It looks a little bit darker on the camera. Brown is good, black is bad. If it turns black, you're gonna have to clear out your skillet and wash it to start the next step. But we're gonna go ahead and pull these chicken. I'm gonna turn it all the way to low, pull this chicken, and then we're gonna add the mushrooms in. Now this is where I'm going off book. So, you know, I do not blame South My Mouth if this recipe does not go. I've never been very successful at skillet rice dishes. I mean, I've had some that have turned out pretty good, but well, let's see. Okay, we're on low. I was gonna add more grease, but there's plenty in there. I think the word grease is like a Southern word. 
Oh, these mushrooms are gonna pull this up really fast. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off for a minute. I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of butter because those mushrooms, I just, they just, like I told you, they're like sponges. So go ahead and I just wanna saute them a little bit, get them a little cooked. Okay, so the next step in her recipe is to add wine to deglaze this skillet and garlic, but I want that in the rice too. So this is where I'm trying to decide which way I want to go. So I'm going to add a little bit of wine here, but not the garlic yet. And then I'll add a little bit more wine. So I'm just adding like a tablespoon right now and I'll add some more in a minute. So when you're cooking with wine, because I want to be able to pull up some of this, the bits so they don't burn. <laughs> And, oh, I need to turn my stove back on. That does help with the cooking process. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and some, add some salt and pepper. There we go, that's looking good. Just give them a quick saute. I'm gonna leave some of the bits down for the next step. Like, I don't wanna pull everything up. And then I'm gonna toss these mushrooms on top of the chicken. I should've got a bigger bowl, but. Whatever, we're gonna make it work. Oh, this is looking so good. So I'm trying to leave most of the liquid into the pot here. I don't wanna get all the mushrooms. And then I'm gonna add a couple tablespoons of butter. Shrimp scampi is like butter and olive oil. And then I've got about five or six cloves of garlic, depending on the size of your garlic. So I'm gonna put this on low again and squeeze in my garlic. In this recipe, I would recommend fresh garlic. I will let you know guys when I think that jarred garlic or garlic paste or something like that is appropriate. But in this type of recipe, fresh is best. That being said, I'm not one of those people that tells you what to do with your recipe. And so if you wanna do gar jarred garlic, by all means, make it yours. All right, add a little bit more olive oil. I'm on low. Oh my gosh, that garlic at the oil, at the heat, ah, oh, you can just smell it so amazing. So I'm about to add some more wine and you see these brown bits? I'm going to work really hard at getting them all up. And I do not want my garlic to burn at this stage. So I'm on low. Okay, so we want about half a cup of wine. I'm not really one to measure. So we're just going to pour some wine in there. And now we want to reduce this by half. So that means we're going to go ahead and bring it up to a boil and let this simmer until there's about half the liquid in here. Oh my gosh, it smells amazing. I wish that y'all could smell this with me. So an interesting fact about me is that I have something that's kind of recently discovered called aphantasia. So what aphantasia is, you can't visualize in your mind's eye. And then since that discovery, they have found that there's other people who are total aphants. So that's me. I, can't, I don't have any senses in my mind. So I cannot see, smell, taste, know the texture of something unless I'm actually touching it, that kind of thing. So it's really fascinating to me how I know how to cook because I cannot tell you what this, like I can't think garlic in my head and know what it's gonna smell like. So when I smell it, it's like, it's like a new sense all over again, you know? A lot of people, if like you close your eyes and you think of like baking cookies, for instance, a lot of people can think about what a cookie smells like baking in the oven. I cannot, unless that cookie is right there in front of me, I cannot smell it. I don't have senses in my mind. I don't know how, I just know what flavors to put together when I'm cooking. Like it's such a fascinating subject for me. I love it. And I've been trying to read more about it and I've tried to add, enter into some studies. They just discovered this as a condition. Like I would think I would, I'm 41 now. I think I was 38 when I first read the first scientific study about it. And you know, up until that point in my life, when someone said visualize, I thought it was like a metaphor. I didn't know people actually could close their eyes and like visualize an apple in front of them. Crazy. Now, <laughs> I'm just gonna contradict myself again. I said that I normally don't measure. Rice is one of those exceptions. I, you have, unless you're a lot better at rice than me, measure your rice. <laughs> We're gonna put one and a half cups of white rice. 
which I already pre-measured out. So this is one and a half cups of white rice. And I'm gonna go ahead and now that this has kind of been reduced down by half, and I'm going to stir this around. I'm so hoping this turns out, like, like I said, like I love cooking rice. I usually, recently I've been doing it in the Instapot, but, and I have done stovetop rice that's come out, but a lot of times it comes out gummy. So we're gonna see. I really hope this turns out. Now I'm going to add three cups of chicken broth. You could use water, of course. It won't be as flavorful, but water would be fine. You could add water and like a squeeze of lemon juice, who would be good. Okay, I'm gonna turn this down low till, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and add this in. Give it a good stir. I put a lot of salt on accident. I noticed when I was doing the mushrooms. So I'm actually gonna kinda go Get the salt here for now and taste at the end. Normally I would salt here, but <laughs> I kind of, while I was talking and videoing, I, I noticed I got a little heavy handed when I did the mushrooms. So I'm gonna go ahead and not salt here. Okay, so I just wanna give this a nice stir. I'm gonna bring this up to a simmer and then we're gonna cover it and let it on low. We're gonna do it for 20 minutes. Okay, now that it is at a simmer, I'm gonna give it one more quick stir here. I'm going to lower the heat down to low and we're gonna cover it for 20 minutes. Okay, so this is my main big burner and it puts out a lot of BTUs and I could hear the rice still boiling. So I went ahead and turned on my back burner, which is actually my simmer burner and I put it on low and I pushed my skillet to the back because I don't want it to keep boiling. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, super tempted to peek, but I waited for y'all guys. So I'm gonna pull this to the front and we're gonna open her up and see what we get. Oh, it's promising. Burner is not on right now. The rice is looking good. It's looking like it's cooked all the way through. Oh, it didn't stick. I mean, a little bit, but not too bad. So I'm gonna check. Ah, nice. I'm gonna give it a quick taste to make sure it's cooked through. But it looks like it is. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Okay. So I'm gonna add some frozen peas. Um, they don't take very long to cook. They just need a little bit of heat. And again, this is a variation off of her recipe because I wanted all my vegetables in one. Need a little bit more. I mean, it's not a super heavy vegetable dish, but. And then we're going to, where'd my spoon? Oh, here's my spoon. All right, I'm gonna stir this, uh, the peas in. And actually I'm gonna stir the Parmesan in at this stage too, because it'll be easier to stir in once uh, before the chicken and all that gets in my pot. So I've got a block of Parmesan. You can buy pre-shredded Parmesan too. This keeps for a long time in the fridge, so, and even in the freezer. So a lot of times I will buy the pre-shredded stuff for fast dishes, but I will keep this in my fridge because it lasts so long. And there's so many times where I'm like, oh, I just need a little Parmesan and I can pull it out. Add as much as you like. Okay, let me stir this in and then I might add a little bit more, but if you put too much at once, it will lump up. Awesome. I'm just kind of, pulling up what did kind of stick to the bottom. But those are the like really yummy parts, really. It didn't burn, it just kind of stuck a little bit. Like, but in paella and in dishes like that, that you like go for those crispy bits. So I'm very, very excited how this is turning out. So south my mouth, I'll link it below. She did say to reserve some of the cooking liquid before you add the chicken, but I knew I had a lot of liquid in here, so I didn't really worry about that. So I'm gonna try to get some of the mushrooms in, get them stirred in, and see, look at all this like, ha ha, flavor liquid. Kind of get those mushrooms evenly around. And of course she had hers like all pretty. Presentation is not my strongest suit. All right, I'm gonna add some parsley. So I like to just get the bunch sometimes and kind of wad it up in my hand and give it like a little haircut. <laughs> give it a little trim up over the skillet here. Man, I made a mess over here. So pretty. Let me show you what it looks like. <gasps> Gorgeous, a, pretty much a one pot chicken dish. Chicken, rice, and mushroom. I mean, we're calling this chicken scampi. 
because it was cooked in garlic butter oil. All right, so here's a plated dish and let's give it a proper taste to see how it does. I did forget to say that she did say in her recipe after you add the chicken to recover it and let it steam for a couple minutes. Mm, that's really good. I like that brown sauce that like we made with the garlic. <laughs> Watson's ready for his dinner too. I'm very pleased. I can't wait till my family gets home from Taekwondo and that we can plate this up and eat. Watson, wait. I gotta tell everybody goodbye. I gotta tell them goodbye. And thank you so much for watching this video. And if you enjoyed it, make sure that you hit subscribe and hit that like button. And until the next video. Are you wanting your dinner? Are you ready for your nummy nums? He says, my bowl is empty, mama. My bowl is empty. <laughs> All right, we'll put some food in it, okay, good boy.